Here's a real high class belt. A brawl is surely brewing. Cuphead! Run and Gun 93rd style cartoon platformer by Studio ADHD, a game which took the world by storm. Everyone was playing it, everyone was talking about it, everybody oh was god. raging about it. Oh my god, the fuck, the fucking jelly bean! Oh my god! I'm so tired of him, man! In fact, here's an exclusive interview we had with PewDiePie where he said he loved the game. Hey, let's roll that clip. <laughs> Thanks, Felix. But back in September 2017, it was all the rage. But now, oh my god! It has less views on Twitch and H1Z1 just survive. Okay, maybe it's not that bad, but I mean, H1 is dead. But just imagine how dead Just Survive is. I mean, ironically, it's considered it's called Just Survive. But still less than 250 viewers on Twitch at 8 p.m. across 32 different streams. What even happened? Oh, yeah, Fortnite happened. Hey, how's it going, guys? And welcome to Best Trends. Oh, Today, we're going to be going over oh, 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 by oh, oh, Fortnite YouTubers. Yes! Oh, yeah. Number one. On September 29th, 2017, Cuphead was released on Xbox One, Steam, and a Microsoft Store, otherwise known as the home place of Minecraft Windows Ruin Everything Edition. Uh, oh, it's pretty late already. Oh my gosh. All right, gotta put all my stuff away. Let's get ready to go to sleep. After Brothers Chad and Jared Moldenhoes, most likely related to Susan, ooh, cheeky, because I can't pronounce either of their names, watched a bull in 1930s Disney animation called Mickey the Deadass Foot Tapping Boat Steering Whistle and Mouse, they decided to make a game called Dark Souls 3 The Animated Edition. The game picked up development in 2010 after Super Meat Boy managed to. Super Meat Profit Talk. Uh, that didn't work as well as I hoped, but it took seven years to complete, and by God, does it show. All was worth it, as in just two weeks, the game had sold over one million copies, and by the end of the year, it had sold over two million. That's only like three months, dude. Now, bearing in mind those figures, as well as the 450,000 followers on Twitch alone, the fact that Cuphead is only pulling a couple hundred viewers is poor. Is it because only small streamers are playing it now? Of course that's one of the reasons, but there's a bunch of different factors that add up to it. But the most possible reason is probably because viewers are bored of the game already, just six months on. As of writing this, it's the 28th of March, just one day before the six month anniversary of Cuphead's release. And so today, we're going to be looking at the last six months of Cuphead and how the game has gone from the most talked about indie game to an occasional time waster whilst waiting for Fortnite to update. Is it just like Dark Souls? It's challenging and it's rewarding. That's why people are comparing it to Dark Souls. I really don't know why everyone's saying this game's hard, but this is fucking baby shit. <laughs> Okay, we get it. We get it. Cuphead is not an easy game. Personally, I never played Dark Souls, so I can't really compare. You know, you know what? I, I just bought Dark Souls 3 the other day, and I haven't even played it yet. Uh, how about we, we compare my, my first boss fight in Dark Souls 3 uh, with my first boss fight from Cuphead from an old video of mine? Oh shit, what? what? Oh boy, what? Hello? This is happening all so quick. Oh, okay, you're a telepathic carrot. Shit, um, can I shoot the carrots? Yes, I can. Oh, uh-oh, okay. Yeah, I think this is happening. This is the root pack. No, how do I roll? Ow! That's not rolling. Ow! Okay, round two. What? Slow it down, buddy! Oh, shit. That wasn't meant to happen. Oh, hold up. Oh, hold up. What's going on? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I don't like this. Oh. I didn't even make it to the boss fight this time. Like, why did I have to... Oh! No, give me a chance. Give me a friggin' chance. I don't know. I don't know. I may, I may have... I've overestimated how hard this was the first time round. Um, oh, no. <laughs> run, run, please. Please don't kill me, please. I just don't want to do the start of it again, please. I have one HP, that's fun. Looking forward to this one. I'm glad I bought this upgrade, dude, because... You see this goddamn carrot? That's what I think, bitch. Oh, ah, no. Yeah, I, I don't quite think that was fair. How did I get him into his, into his like, second stage? In the first attempt, but now I can't even. Yeah, that's yeah, that's not very fair though, is it? No, I think this is my sixth attempt. I'm not. I'm not even kidding now. I haven't just pretended to edit out like five attempts. Like this is actually my sixth attempt at this goddamn fight. This is the first level. This is the first level in the first world. It's not fair, dude. Cause the first time I came in here, he was asleep. I managed to get some good hits on him. Oh, he's on half health. What? Oh my god. I got this. Nope. Nope. You want some? You want some hummus? Huh? 
You want some hot? That's right, a knockout. A boy, a knockout wolf. <coughs> oh my god. Oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Fuck you. Easy on a cuphead. Easy on a cuphead. Uh, so comparing my first time playing cuphead with my first time playing Dark Souls, I think it's safe to say a cuphead is unreasonably difficult. It's either that or I'm just really bad at games. <sighs> Watching Bad Clip of me doing a first boss fight is hard uh, because for starters, I couldn't even parry. Uh, but the fact that it took me someone who actively plays platformer games five times to complete, it's a little bit embarrassing, uh, but luckily not as embarrassing as Dean Takeshi's Castle's uh, attempt at the tutorial. But we've already beaten our meme more than the Home Alone 14 year old will probably beat his, I, I'm not gonna finish that. There are no winners this time on Takeshi's Castle. What captured so many people's interest in Cuphead was the mixture of the unique art style, how stunning the game was visually, the crazy good soundtrack, and Hani managed to pull off the concept so well. IGN gave it an 8.8 .8 out of 10, but IGN would probably give this horse racing game a 7 out of 10, so it doesn't really mean much at this point. Now, imagine if a game was released in place of Cuphead, where instead of playing Cuphead with the 1930s cartoon animation style, you played a Crash Bandicoot style character and did the same 2D style boss fights but with the PS2 style artwork. It probably wouldn't have even done a quarter of as good as Cuphead did. I mean, the character wouldn't actually be Crash Bandicoot, it'd be like Beaver Bruce and the seven boss battles or something, or I, I, don't, I don't really know. But unfortunately, like all gimmicks do, they die. What went well? Yep, that's right, we're going down the old primary school science investigation route. Gameplay-wise, the boss fights were just fantastic. Everybody praised how creative and fun the characters were, their designs were cool, they transformed into all these different types of shapes and forms, and personally, I think it's the most creative game I've ever played. Other than Roblox, of course. I mean, come on, have you seen his friggin' swan ride, my dude? I don't think there has been a single boss fight that hasn't taken me more than 10 times to try and beat. Other than the first one. I have I have evidence, alright? I have evidence. Now, you may have gotten close on your first attempt, and then, you know, not, not so close on your second, a bit poor in a third. Why can't I get past the first part anymore? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Studio MDMA, they really know how to kick you when you're down. The way that bosses battle you with a variety of attacks in no specific order is what keeps each attempt feel fresh and even harder. There's also an in-game money system. I uh, know not my Transactions, which is incredibly rare these days, I know, which allows you to spend money in Poor Crown's Emporium on different firing styles, power ups, the big birth of five card special moves, and best of all, there's local co op. Yeah, that's right, you can just get your little brother to come in, revive you every time you die. How next gen is that? It's just beautiful. Although nothing we haven't seen similar of in previous platformer games across the years, the map is unique and an artistic take on a level selection hub, which I love. The bosses are crazy and fun, the variety of different attack styles keeps you on your toes, the progression system gives you choices on which way you want to go first and then the running gun happened, and then the running gun- Yeah, the running gun happens. Oh boy. Now like how I started the video, this game is titled as a running gun game. However, the running gun aspect of the game is probably the weakest component of the whole thing. Now these classic 2D platformer style levels aren't particularly bad by any means. However, as many people have pointed out, they're just all over the place. And I know the idea of the game is to be manic and difficult, but sometimes you're dodging all these flying objects and dynamic map events, it just feels like there's no rhythm to it, like a game such as Super Meat Boy. And you just have to run, shoot, and hope for the best. Now I'm just gonna go off the tracks a little bit and quickly talk about commentary YouTuber Elvis the Alien and his unique series titled People Ruin Everything. Starting with The Legend of Zelda, the series is based on crazed fans ruining games, TV shows, or films with extremely graphic porn, cringy cosplays, bad memes, and broken language fanfictions. At the peak of its popularity during Season 3 when the rest of the world discovered it, Elvis' People Ruin Everything on Rick and Morty gained 800k views. People Ruin Shrek, featuring Parasynical, a YouTuber forever haunted by the popularity of his MLG parody Shrek is Swag, racked up 1.2 million views. People Ruin Game of Thrones, featuring Colossal is Crazy, hasn't even hit 300k views in comparison to the others, despite how insanely popular the show is. Overwatch also hit 1.2 million, which came as no surprise due to the insane popularity of the game. However, People Ruin Cuphead currently stands at 1.4 million views. Any day of the week, you would probably say the Overwatch is 10 times more popular than Cuphead. However, this video gained a whole 200,000 more views. The Cuphead video is the most popular out of the entire series, and it just goes to show that five months ago, people showed so much interest in Cuphead related content. Big streamers wouldn't stop playing it, even bigger YouTubers kept uploading it, Kyle Chop did a full let's play of it, something they rarely do now. Cuphead is fucking amazing! And yet, on its sixth month anniversary, Cuphead can hardly be found anywhere. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. 
I say that as if I'm one of those like creepy top five channels where I'm talking about a cartoon which has completely disappeared off the face of the internet. But no, people are still playing Cuphead, still uploading and streaming Cuphead, but it seems like it's only getting like 2% of the traction it was getting just six months ago. So I went to YouTube.com to see if the game is still being uploaded. And surprisingly, yeah, there's still perhaps like two videos every 10 minutes going up, which is quite a lot. But you'll notice that all these videos are of live streams that have been completed, Russian videos that I'm not even clicking on, eight-year-olds with an iPad and a Cuphead plushie for whatever reason, or people who are just way behind on Let's Playing it, as if people want to see yet another Root Pack Let's Play. Remember when We Happy Few came out? How many times did you watch the frickin' pinata get hit? Oh, we got a pinata for you. Oops, it's actually a dead rat. Whoops. It seems like the most popular upload of Cuphead this week with 200,000 views is the animation for a song by Fandroid Music about Cuphead, a channel which raps about games with an Android singer. And the song was originally uploaded about five months ago, but I guess, unfortunately, it took the animator a good five months to finish it, and they probably didn't anticipate the game being this dead. That reminds me of Legunny? The YouTuber who used to make the super crunchy cod zombie songs with the crude animations, he did a Cuphead song and it was fucking awful. Whoa, whoa. We had to move fast to keep King Dice's ass. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Damn. Then refused to give Damn, boy. And it got 8 million views. Where was this video? Where was this video when I was talking about friggin' Elves the Alien? That's like a whole paragraph I talked about. Elves the Alien with 1.4 million views, and this has 8 million views. What are we- what are- what are we doing wrong on this website? So now that we've wasted so long talking about how well the game did and how much it's quietened down now, could the game actually be revived? Revive me, I have the ray gun, man. I got the ray gun. Well, firstly, with the progression style and the difficulty of the game, I'm sure there's lots of people who gave up on it after getting stuck on a certain boss. I only just defeated the honeybee boss today after six months of owning the game, and I still play it regularly. So with the large percentage of players who haven't even completed the base game, it begs the question, will there be a DLC? And if there is DLC, will people even bother? In this really awkward clip, the interviewer asked Chad and Jared about the future of the game. And although they hinted that Cuphead would return in some way or another, at the time they said they'd hardly even talked about the future at all. Might we see these two fine young men again? Well, I guaranteed you'll see Cuphead at some point. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. But as far as like what our plans, what are we distinctly doing next? Uh, there's been zero time to yeah. really we've, we've, breathe or think. We might have so had two 30-minute chats about the yeah. future. Now this interview is five months back, and after having some time to think and seeing all the millions of sales, the hype online, how much people love the game, they probably decided that either a DLC or even a sequel is a great direction to go in. Who wouldn't? I mean, have you seen Dead Rising 4? Talk about being a dead horse! Oh my god! Now Cuphead sold over two million copies in three months on. Xbox and PC alone, so it makes us wonder, could there be a possibility of ports to other consoles? Keeping the game exclusively on Xbox One out of all the consoles, despite most companies favoring the PS4 as their next-gen engine, has isolated perhaps another million more sales. Bearing in mind I have no knowledge on game development or how porting works, but surely a port to the PS4 would be easy enough. And much like the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy now making its way from PS4 exclusivity to other consoles, restarting the hype machine, the port would kick some more life into Cuphead and it would only start picking up once again. After a game has been released, it is very rare for its popularity to peak again, and people know this and they expect this. However, this could get the Cuphead train rolling again, and by the Cuphead train I mean Beppy the Clown's the stupid little fucking red coaster. Br Sorry, I'm, I'm getting off track. What I'm trying to say is Cuphead does still have some potential for love. <laughs> Tiny angry boyfriend. Across the internet, Reddit especially, fans have been asking for a Nintendo Switch port too. Something that they want for every friggin' game out there, apparently. One issue there is moving away from the handheld controller gameplay with quite specific controls to a touchscreen portable console with minimal buttons. Something that may have been simple on a PS Vita or 3DS for example, but more of a struggle on the Switch. Now that we've gone over the possibility of Cuphead being CPR'd by console ports, back to the idea of DLC and what it could consist of. Would this DLC, or perhaps even a sequel, consist of a different storyline, and maybe even an alternative ending? Talking of sequels, one thing I stupidly didn't realize until I was this deep into the video is that Cuphead's full title is Cuphead Don't Deal With The Devil. Obviously that's because the game is about not dealing with the devil. However, could it just be a title for a certain story that Cuphead is in? Could we see Cuphead and Mugman in a different storyline? For example, Cuphead 
a race against time. I don't know, something really corny like that. But Don't Deal With The Devil could just be the title of one chapter in Cuphead series, and we could have a different title signifying a whole different Cuphead game. Mmm, we all just be spitballing up in here. Perhaps even a different set of playable characters could enter the world with new bosses, or even more interesting, seeing a rematch between the player and previous bosses, but with reimagined attacks, different locations, perhaps affected by their defeat, maybe controlled by a new protagonist, who knows. Now despite the fact that we've already got the base game and its mechanics ready for a DLC to be added to, it took them 7 years to make the game not just make it work. This includes countless frames of detailed animation for characters, movement, attacks, fight transitions, map areas, backgrounds, and so much more. Not to forget both writing and coding new boss fights or levels, please don't be running gun. But at the end of the day, has this 1930s cartoon platform had its time already? Where a lot of players haven't even completed the full game and couldn't warrant spending money on a DLC. And that being said, would a DLC revive much life into it in the first place? But whatever happens, Cuphead was a success. Although now, six months on, it may have died down a lot, it still cemented itself as a modern classic in the platformer genre. For an indie game, it did incredibly well, and the seven years worth of anticipation from fans, including the people who genuinely got tattoos before even knowing what the game was about, quite obviously paid off. We received a game which kept us busy, on our toes, and also fueled a bunch of rage-filled reactions. God damn it! it looks stunning, it plays great, you could just tell the team loved the game, put so much effort into it, and they also fixed all the bugs in one big patch about a month after it came out. No pissing around. Oh, and Chan Jaren just made a fuck ton of money. Congrats! Let me know what you think. Will Cuphead return? If so, will it be with DLC, and what would the DLC consist of? Will it just be in the form of a port, or could we potentially see a sequel to the game? Well, who knows, cause that's just a theory. And Matt Peck's annoying voice ending my video theory. Thanks for watching. <sighs> I hate myself.